right so now the second part video on fractional indices so we need to work out the value of 3 to the power negative 1 now 3 to the power negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over 3 okay and then the second one over 5 raised to the power of negative 1 now the key thing here is when you um switch the friction inside like 5 over 4 the negative uh, disappears so it becomes 1 okay and then that's going to be 5 over 4 and the next one i'll find the value of 5 raised to the power of negative 1 and that's going to be 1 over 5 and next and the recipro reciprocal of 3 is just going to be 1 over 3 And here we need to find the value of 100 raised to the power 1 over 2. Now, I like to write this as the square root of 100. And that's going to give me 10. And the value of 64 raised to the power half. Well, I like to say this is the square root of 64 raised to the power 1. That's going to be 8 to the power 1. And that's just going to be 8. Next for this is going to be the square root of 49 raised to the power 1. The square root of 49 is 7, 7 raised to the power 1. That's going to be 7. And similarly, for this also, I'm going to be the square root 81 raised to the power 1. And that's going to be 9 raised to the power 1. Again, that's going to be 9. And for this, you go to the square root of 36 and raise it to the power negative 1. The square root of 36 is 6 raised to the power negative 1, and this can be written as 1 over 6. And now we come to the next one, find the value of 64 raised to the power 1 over 3. Now this is the cube root of 64 raised to the power 1. The cube of 64 is going to be 4 raised to the power 1, and that's going to be 4. Next, you do want to do 8, the value of 8 raised to the power 1 over 3. That's the cube root of 8 raised to the power 1, and the cube of 8 is 2 raised to the power 1, is definitely going to be 2. Next, I find the value of 27 raised to the power 1 over 3. So I'll just do straight to the cube root of 27 raised to the power 1. And now that's 3 raised to the power 1. Again, that's going to be 3. So I want to work out the value of 105 raised to the power 1 over 3. So I'll do the cube root 125. And the rest of to the power 1. And the cube root of 125 is 5 raised to the power 1. Yeah, that's going to be 5. And then next, you need to do uh, 64 raised to the power, negative 1 over 3. So I go first, the cube root of 64, and close that to the power of negative 1. And the cube root of 64 is 4 raised to the power minus 1, which is the same thing as 1 over 4. And again here, you need to work the value of 64 raised to the power 2 over 3. So I do the cube root of 64 and raise that to the power of negative 2. And the cube of 64 is 4 raised to the power of minus 2. It's the same thing as 1 over 4 to the power of 2. And that simplifies to 1 over 16. And for this, you need to work out the value of 125 raised to the power of 2 over 3. So you do the cube root of 125 and raise it to the power of 2. And the cube root of 125 is 5. And 5 raised to the power 2 is um, 25. And then we come to the next question. You need to have 8 to the power minus 2 over 3. And then first you do the cube root of 8. And then hold that everything to the power minus 2. And that cube of 8 is 2 raised to the power minus 2. It's going to be 1 over 2 raised to the power 2. You set it as 1 over 4. 
And then this again is um, 27 raise of power, negative 2 by 3. So you do the cube root of 27 and raise it everything to the power minus 2. And the cube root of 27 is 3 and raise it to the power minus 2. Now this is the same thing as 3 raise to the power 3 to the power 2. And that's 3 to the power 9. And again, for this one, you have the value of 8x to the power 6 raised to the power 2 over 3. So what we need to do is find um, um, find the cube root of 8x to the power 6. Okay, the cube root and then raise to the power 2. Now the cube root of 8 is definitely going to be 2. And the cube root of x to the power 6 is definitely going to be x to the power of 2. And raise everything to the power of 2. And it's going to be 4x to the power of 4. And then for, for this type of question, I think one thing I, I will suggest is flip the fraction um, the other way around and the minus kind of disappears. So this is going to be 125 over 64 and uh, because 2 over 3. You notice that the minus kind of disappears and then this now becomes like uh, square root of 125 over 64. So raise everything to the power of 3. I read that this is the cube root, I'm sorry. So there's a cube root here. And, and let me put it very well so you can see it very, very clearly. So this is the cube root and raise it to the power of 2. Now the cube root of 125 is 5. And the cube root of 64 is 4. And raise to the power of 2. So it's going to be 5 squared, that's 25. And 4 squared is going to be 16. So the answer is going to be 25 over 16. The next, again, you do the square root of this. Uh, but first, I need to flip the fraction inside the bracket. So it's going to be 16 over 25. And it is going to be 3 over 2. Now, notice every time I flip the fraction inside the bracket, the minus disappears. Okay, all right, so this is going to be the square root of 16 over 25 raised to the power of 3. And the square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5, and this is raised to the power of 3. And of course, if you multiply this, it's going to be 64 over 1, 2, 5. And for these again, I like to rather flip the fraction inside. So the minus in the fraction, the power fraction kind of disappears. So this is going to be 27 over 8 raised to the power 2 e 3. And now I can now do the cube root 27 over 8 and hold everything to the power of 2. And the cube root 27 is 3 and the cube root 8 is 2. And I hold everything again to the power of 2. And that's going to be 9 over 4. And for this, again, I flip the fraction in to get rid of the minus in the power. That's 4 over 9. I'm sorry. Not, yeah, yeah, I think it's correct. Yeah, 4 over 9. And power 3 over 2. The minus cancels out. So now I do the square root of 4 over 9. I raise everything to the power of 3. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, and hold everything to the power of 3. Now 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and 3 to the power of 3 is definitely going to be 27. So the answer is 8 over 27. And now we come to a rather different type of question. So we need to look at the value of the square the root root of 2 times 8 times 10 to the power of 12. What I think we can do, um, let's multiply 2 and 8, that's 16, times 10 to the power 12, and then hold everything to the power 4 root. Okay, and uh, what we can do is to separate the powers, like the 4, I mean the numbers inside, in inside, that's square root of 16, times the 4 root of 10 to the power of 12. Now, the 4 root of 16 is 2, and the fourth root of this is divided by, by 4, that's 3, that's 10 to the power of 3. And if you multiply this, that's going to be 2 times 1, 1,000, and that's going to be 2,000.
And the same for this, you need to do the same thing. You multiply 416 and 64 times 10 to the power of 15, and then hold everything to the power of key root. All right, I'm going to go straight to so key root of 64 is definitely going to be 4, and the key root of 10 to the power of 15 is by 15 by 3. It's going to be 10 to the power of 5. Now, 10 to the power of 5 is the same thing as with um, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then multiply this. That's going to be, uh, what do you call this? This is 400,000. And then uh, the next one, uh, we have, we're given this. So we need to find value of n. I think I need to write this as the square root as 3 raised to the power half. Yeah. And then this is 3 to the power n. And of course, you know there's a 1 here. So if you add, take one of the base, look at the same. If you add one plus half, because it's going to okay, that's going to be three over two. And this is equal to three to the power n. The base and the base are the same. So take out the base and take out the r. So n will be three over two. And the same for 27. Um, he's going to do it. So we have 3 times the square root of 27, and it's also 3 to the power n, was the value of n. So to do n, I need to write uh, 27 as 27 to the power half, right? And that's equal to 3 to the power of n. Now, again, I know 27 can be still be written as um, 3 to the power of 3. And, of course, multiply that by half. And um, so that's going to be 3 times 3 to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 3n. Again, you can see they have the same base here on the left. So you I think I have to come over here. So that's going to be 3, 1 plus 3 over 2 is equal to 3n here. So if you add 1 plus 3 over 2, that's going to be a 5 over 2. And this is equal to 3n here. So the base and the base are the same. So clear the base and take the power. So n will be 5 over 2. Now we come to um, another you know, question here. So we need to work out, given that x is 2 to the power p, and Q is 2 to the power of Q, and express X and Y, and all Y, okay? For the first one is 2P plus, 2 to the power of P plus Q, okay? All right, so what we could do is, um, we could write this as um, 2P times um, 2Q, yeah? Because this definitely will give you back this, so we know 2p is definitely going to be x, um, okay? And uh, of course, you're times it by 2q is q, yeah? And 2 to the power q is y, so this is by y. So the answer is going to be x, y. And then we come to this one, um, 2 to the power 2p. Now, I think this can be written as... Um, 2 to the power of p raised to the power 2. And 2 to the power of p is x. And to the power of 2. So this is going to be x squared. So this is going to be x squared. And then for the next one, I think this is going to be 2 uh, q uh, divided by 2 to the power of 1. Yep, that's it. So we know 2q is uh, y, and 2 to the power 1 is just 2. So the answer is going to be y over 2. Kind of really straightforward, right? And, uh, well, kind of really interesting for this one. So we have given that 3 to the power minus 8 is 0 0.2. So we want to work out the uh, value of 3 to the power of n raised to power 2. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. So I know that this is the question 3 minus n is equal to 0 0.2.
I know that um, this will be 1 over 3 to the power n is equal to 0 0.2. I know that. And um, I can, in my as multiple fat, cross multiply. Um, that's going to be, I have to multiply this up here and then bring this one downward. downward. So it's going to be kind of a bit complicated, but um, just try to understand who brings 0 0.2 down and bring 3 to the power n on the right. So that's going to be 1 over 0 0.2 and uh, it's going to be 3 power n. So now we have 1 divided 0 0.2. Now, um, so so 0 0.2 is the same. My piece of work in here, that's 0 0.2 is 2 over 10 here. All right, so it's going to be, I hope I can write it the other way around. So 1.0.2 is going to be um, uh, 1 over 1 over 5 because 3 to the power of n. We definitely, if you do 1 divided by 1 over 5. Okay, so the answer, so 3n is going to be 5 if you work it out. So 3 to the power n is 5. Okay, so now we need to work at the value of 3n to the power 2. So therefore, if you're going to work at 3 to the power of n, press power 2. So 3 to the power n is 5. And replace it, and 5 to the power 2 is 5 times 5. And that's 25. So here is 25. And uh, for this, Again, it's just similar. So we have 5 minus n, which is the same thing as 1 over 5 to the power of n. It's equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so I bring this one down here and this one to the other side. So 1 over 0 0.5 is equal to 5 over n. And 1 divided by 0 0.5. But first, let me try to check something out. Uh, 0 0.5 is the same thing as 5 over 10. And that's in as half, okay? So we could necessarily say that this is something as 1 over plus is equal to 5 to the power of n, okay? So but let me clear this piece here. So if you divide 1 over 2 by half, it's going to be 2, and 5 to the power of n is 2. So now we need to work out what 5n raised to power 3 will be. So 5 to the power of n is 2, so that's kind of replace this with 2. And to the power of 3, definitely will be 8. So the answer here is going to be 8. And then uh, for this one, so we know that the full power of n is 8, and we want to work out the value of n. Mm. So I know that 4 can be written as 2 to the power of 2, okay? And then we'll put that by n. And I know 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3. Again, the base are the, sa the, base are the same, so to the powers. So n will be 3 over 2. Or one and one over two, as the case should be. Okay, so I think I rather leave it the way this is. But I think that it's just okay. And um, we come to the next one. So we have given that four to the power minus n is equal to thirty-two, and we want to get the value of n. Again, I know that four to the power minus n is the same thing as one over four to the power of n, and that's going to be equal to thirty-two. Again, I would like how to cross multiply into chain them, bring 32 to the bottom here and bring 4n to the other side. So it's 1 over 32, this will be 4 to the power of n. Now, quite interestingly, we want to work out the value of n, right? So I know that 32 can be written as um, to the power of 5. But let me, before I do that, let me bring this 32 upward. Yeah. So this is going to be 32 to the power of minus 1 is equal to 4 to the power of n. Now, I know 32 can be written as 2 to the power of 5, okay, and raised to the power of minus 1. Again, to the right is 4 to the power of n. Now, if I look at 4 here, I know I can write 4 as 2 to the power of 2. And of course, put that n here, and here it will be 2 to the power of 5, minus 1. So, if you, if you expand them, you have 2 to the power of minus 5. And 2 to the power 2n. Again, you can see that the bottom twos can cancel out. So now you're now left with minus 5 is equal to 2n. 
and n is going to be minus 5 over 2. Or you might want to write as a mixed fraction. That's going to be minus 2 whole and 1 and a half. Now, which edible you choose is going to be correct. Okay. So I think I'll have to choose minus 5 over 2. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.